All right, so in this video, we're going to be making a serrated bezel for this piece of turquoise. So let's get started. So normally, this is the bezel wire that I use. So this is fine silver or 999, and it is 0.2, I'm sorry, 0.32 millimeters thick. So very thin, very easy to bend. So a lot of people have asked for a thicker bezel because they don't like the really thin bezels. So I'm going to show you how to do that in this video using this. This is going to be the back plate of our entire bezel setup. So this is also a very common setting for turquoise that I found. So I think this will be a fitting stone for this. To figure out how long you need your bezel to be, the easiest way to calculate it without doing any type of math is you take some tape and tape it around the outside of your stone and then remove the tape. So we're gonna do that. All right, so I cut down the tape to a very small amount, seeing that this is way too big. And now I'm just going to wrap it around the outside of the stone. And then I'm just going to mark the spot where it overlaps and then cut it off. So once you have that, you can actually put it onto your metal so you know how much of the metal you need for your bezel. So there we go. And I just need to mark it here and then mark it right there because that's not 100% at the edge. So now we have two line marks on here. If you can get a perfectly flat edge and get that lined up, then you only have to make one mark. But now we need to figure out how tall we need this. If you look at the stone itself, you can measure it and figure out where it actually starts to curve. So about right there. Because when you get up to a certain point on the stone where it starts to curve in, as soon as you lock down a bezel on that, the stone cannot be removed. And that's all you really need. And it'll be able to show off as much of the stone as possible. You can go higher if you want to, but it's really up to you. So for this, I'm going to be going up 2.65 millimeters. And then with our metal down here, I'm just going to scribe it in using the calipers. Try not to do this if you have expensive calipers because you can ruin the tips of these, but these are very cheap ones. And that's why I use them like this. All right, so now that we have the line and everything in here, we need to cut this out. And I'm going to use a jeweler saw to do that. All right, so I need to clean up the edges of this to just make them as flat as possible. It will make soldering a lot easier. So one easy way to do this is to mark out just about every two millimeters on this. And then we're going to be cutting it. I'm also going to mark a somewhat center line on here. All right, so there's my line. It's not 100% centered, but it doesn't really matter. It's close enough. And the reason why we even put this line is so we can cut down to it. All right, so I set this to two millimeters. You can see the lines on here. So you're going to do that all the way across. All right, so that's all marked. Now we have to do the tedious task of sawing all this. Um, you can use a vise to hold this to make it easier, or you can just use a bench pin. All right, so there we go. And then we need to add straight down lines. All right, so that's all done. And you'll notice that it has a nice bend to it now. Because of 
all the lines that we just put in, it made this easier to bend. So now we need to actually bend this around our stone to get the right shape. But before I do that, I'm going to anneal this a little bit to make sure that it's going to be as easy as possible to actually move. So I'm just going to take this and quench it. Alright, so I'm just going to take this and make sure that the cuts are on the outside and the top cuts are on the top. And then I'm going to round it around my stone. Alright, so it's a little too long, so I'm going to cut these two off right here. And those shoot, two right there should meet up. So I need to solder these together. So I'm going to stretch them like that and push them together and then pull them back and they should kind of stay butted up against one another. Alright so I need to put this through the pickling solution first so I can actually solder this because it's completely dirty and the solder won't work. So let's do that. Okay when soldering this I'm going to just put it onto my block like so and flux the joint area that I need to solder. And then I'm going to take a piece of hard solder and then place the solder joint on top of the actual piece of solder. Alright, that should be good. So now I need to take this and put it into the pickling solution to clean it up and make sure our solder joint is good. So now that this is out of our pickling solution, we can cut down the top and bottom a little bit to just make them flush. Because I cut this out by hand and it's not going to be perfectly flat. To do that, I'm going to be using some 120 grit sandpaper on a hard flat surface and a little bit of water. Alright, so that should be pretty good. It should be nice and flat now. So you don't have any high spots when you're soldering and you'll have gaps and you don't want that. So the first thing you want to do after doing this is take your stone and see if it actually fits in your bezel. Alright so there we go and it's very tight in here. And the reason why we do this right now is it should bend it back to being the right shape because after sanding it it's going to get a little out of whack. You can also press on the top and bottom to make sure that it starts to seat to the right shape. With how tight this one is, I might have to cut it down a little bit on the inside once I solder it, just to make sure our stone is going to fit. But we'll worry about that once we get it soldered. So I already cut a piece of silver for the backing, and we're going to solder it on this. And this is 1.6 millimeters and this is 0 0.6 millimeters. So let's go do that. Alright, so how I like to do this is take some paste uh, flux and put it on here and then flip it over and do the other side. This should help protect against fire scaling or fire staining or whatever you prefer to call it. And then for the bezel, I just do the bottom area of it, and then kind of place it in the center like that. Also, I'm going to be using a screen to do this, and heating it from the underside. So what I'm going to do first is heat this up a little bit to start to dry out our flux. And the reason why I do this is when you put your solder inside of here, it will start jumping around with the steam coming off of the flux and you don't really want that. Alright, that should be good enough. So now I can just start heating it from the underside of it and all the solder should flow under the bezel. Alright, so there we go. It should have flowed all the way through. And we can throw this into our pickling solution after it cools down. Alright, so here it is out of the pickling solution, so now I just need to cut this out with a saw, so I'm going to do that now. Yeah. 
And for the edges around the sides, I'm going to clean that up with a file real quick. You can also leave a uh, border on this if you really wanted to, but I want this to look like one solid piece. Alright, so that is all flush now, and then I'm going to extend those lines all the way down so it makes it look like this is just one piece. Alright, so now those are all extended down. And I'm going to just put a small ring on the back of this. I've already made the ring just to save some time but it's a square uh, 16 gauge wire and it's 10 millimeters around. And then I just put cuts into it so it matches the aesthetic look of this. So I'm gonna put this on the back and we just need to solder that on real quick. So I'm just going to take both my pieces and put flux on them. And I'm gonna take my ring and just set it on the back here and it's going to be angled weird, but I need it to be flat like that. So to do that, I'm just going to use a third hand to hold it in place. Alright, so this is fresh out of the um, pickling solution and all cleaned up. I'm going to put a top ring onto it. and do our last bit of soldering because once we start setting our stone we can't put any more heat into this so I'm going to solder that shut and all the soldering work will be done alright so now that everything is all pickled for the last time I'm going to take a piece of copper and wrap it around here and dip this into some liver of sulfur. This will darken the silver and basically turn it black. And the reason why I'm doing it now before doing any finishing or anything like that is I want it to stay in all of the lower areas and instead of doing this after all of that and then having to repolish it, I can go from this to cleaning it up and then polishing. All right, there we go. Now before polishing, I'm going to put our stone in. So this is going to be a very tight fit. All right, there we go. So now we need to push this in. So for setting, I'm. So for setting, I'm going to be using a hammer piece that hooks up to your flex shaft. And then I'm going to be using a different um, tip for it. But you can use the stock one that comes with this. And what this basically does is when you push the pedal, it moves and it basically hammers everything down. Makes this a lot easier than using hand tools. You can use hand tools or a hammer and a hand tool, but this is what I'm going to use. So all I'm going to do is hold this steady on my piece and push everything down. Alright, so there we go, and you can't move the stone, it won't fall out. Now all of this needs to be polished. And with using that tool that I was just showing, it will leave marks where it hammered. So that's what we're going to polish out, and just polish the whole thing up in general. Alright, so I'm just going to use a polishing pad and some polish. 
Also, you'll notice these things on my fingers. They're little silicone finger protectors. They're extremely cheap and they're really helpful for doing this because this is going to get really hot as I polish it and this helps not burn yourself. You'll still get hot through them though. All right, so this is all polished up, but it's super dirty now. So I just need to go clean this off using some hot water and soap and a toothbrush. Or if you have a ultrasonic cleaner, you can throw this into that. All right, so here we are, all finished up and cleaned. And even the um, chain itself is squares. So everything kind of just goes together. So you can use a bezel pusher like this if you don't have one of these to press your bezel in. You basically just kind of set it up against here and press really hard or push like this and roll up. So you basically go like that and roll. And it should get it to where it needs to go, but this is a lot easier. I'll have links to everything I used in this in the description if you're looking for any of this. But if you can, I suggest getting one of these. So if you're looking for a more in-depth video on how to polish your piece, there's a link right up here. And if you want more videos showing how to make other types of jewelry or just different techniques, there's a playlist down here. Other than that, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.